Hey guys. You're listening to Model Talk, episode three. With Devin Blackerby and Nicole Nance. Yay. Yay. Today we're tackling stereotypes, <sighs> so this is going to be a doozy. So this, be prepared. <laughs> this is a big subject. Um, we talked about, like, potentially it needed some sort of trigger warning beforehand because, uh, you know, there's a lot of um, very serious routes that this could go down. And so just to let you know, a little heads up. Um, but I'm kind of excited to tackle this topic. I agree. Yeah, we're probably going to... I'd say we were, are going to touch on the subject of eating disorders. We're pre- potentially going to touch on the subject of like over-sexualization. So if any of that is a trigger for you, maybe skip this episode. Or maybe just like... <laughs> get past that part a little yeah. bit <laughs> we'll give you a heads up before we dive into it though so just so you know okay cool well, <sighs> i think we've all encountered them <laughs> i think so too um <clears throat> there's so many we have such a long list yes. um this could potentially turn into a two-part episode i think it would be kind of cool if after this episode if you guys want to send us um questions or contributions to any of the topics or even, like, stories that you uh, want us to share and not necessarily say your name to no, just educate. keep it fully anonymous, yeah. I think that would be kind of cool because, like we said a bunch of times, this is a really um, big topic. So, yeah. So, actually, we have the first one on our list. It's both Zoolander Complex. Yeah. <laughs> so... Did you watch Zoolander before you started the modeling? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, because I didn't. Like, so a I million know. times. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know at all so like I think my first couple shows I remember getting the reference a lot of like oh can you turn left and I'm like I don't oh. know what this means <laughs> I haven't seen this and then yeah. I watched it and I was like oh no this is so bad <laughs> this is so bad for our job <laughs> it is such a funny movie though it's good it is and I love um, that for the second one they actually let uh, Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson like they got to walk in like a I think Paris Fashion Week for like part of promo for it but they both actually got to be models be models which is cool like I think it's fun that they gave a nod to like the industry yeah. and stuff but Oh, Zoolander. But basically, um, we put Zoolander Complex, that models are not smart. Yes. They only uh, go by their looks, and that's it. I've only met one person that actually meets this standard. Oh, yeah? Only went, met one model. And he was still very nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, yeah, he just, not a lot going on upstairs. But out of all of the people we know, if we can only think of one, mm-hmm. that's pretty awesome. Uh, and proves our point, so let's dive into that topic. I'd say it's rarely the case. I feel like most models I work with are usually juggling many things because yeah. uh, if people don't know, this is not a career path. Like, mm-hmm. you have to be able to do something else because for women, modeling maybe lasts till you're 30, and then after that, you have to transition. Mm-hmm. Like, all of the big models, like we talked about Tyra last time, like all of the large models that are still working today. Yeah, they still model, like, occasionally they'll do a runway, or, like, you can always do photos no matter how old you yeah. are, right? But they've all transitioned. Like, right. Tyra Banks does a lot of hosting. Mm-hmm. Heidi Klum also does a lot of hosting. I love Heidi Klum. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Carly Kloss now is hosting Project Runway. Yeah. Like, or you transition into acting, like, Naomi Campbell's mostly doing acting. Like. Yeah, it definitely, um, you have to basically give yourself job security by being really diverse mm-hmm. and that requires a lot of intelligence and work and education mm-hmm. um like a couple of the people we talked about tyra banks i looked up some of these beforehand i don't just know these off the oh, top of my head yeah. but her net worth is 90 million dollars um she owns banks productions which i actually forgot about she's the founder and the ceo um and so Anything she produces is under her own company. Shit, good for her. Yeah, (laughs) she's pretty smart. Um, Then Heidi Klum has some sort of company too. She should. After Project Runway, she always had like a little. She yeah. Right. She has to. Has to get on it, Heidi. If you don't, because yeah. Um, And then Carly Klaus, she actually started a free program Mm -hmm. nationwide to teach um, young girls from 13 to 18 to how to code. And the intention of that was to keep women up to date with technology so that they can continue working in the fields um, of the growing industry. And it was to address the issue that um, 
young girls don't get the same kind of education towards things like that, Mm -hmm. which is really cool. And then this one blows my mind. This is totally separate from her husband. Giselle Bunchton is... Her net worth is three hundred and sixty million dollars. I'm not surprised. She's actually, yeah. she's done a lot of like little film cameos yeah. and stuff, so I'm not surprised. And she's amazing. She she's is such a great model. I've always really also, liked she was her. In the Olympics, right? For Brazil. She did that like walk. I wonder Really? That... Yeah, when Brazil when Rio hosted, she did like a long, like a essentially solo runway walk. Yeah. And they were like, Oh, it's her last runway walk. So I wonder I hope huh. she got paid for that. She, I yeah, you that. I sh- She probably did. That's cool. Yeah. That's one thing. I don't think people realize that runway walking is actually a lot more tiring than regular walking. She had a long ass walk. Like Like, you watch the footage of it, it's several minutes. I have to look it up. Like yeah, it's because you have. You're just so like in tune with shoulders back, your hips. Are you moving too much? What are you wearing? Are you selling it? I don't know. I practice on the on the treadmill, Mm -hmm. and I notice a big difference when I'm just kind of like walking, and then when I. I'm practicing runway walking. I get tired really fast. They had her walk from, like, one end of the stadium to the other. Ugh, so that's it's going to take a while. Like, Go Giselle. But yeah. with all the money she makes, and I really liked this, she donated, like, um, her biggest donation was $1.5 million to the Red Cross for the um, hurricane relief in Haiti. Nice. Or was it a hurricane? Oh. Yeah, hurricane. Earthquake. I believe so. They had a lot of natural, natural disaster. disaster. Yeah. And then a million to the Japanese Red Cross Society. So she ma- she drops bank to help other people, which is cool. Um, yeah. Anyways. And you're in college. I am. And modeling. <laughs> I think a lot of models Don't model. Yeah. And I also think they use it to pay for college. Oh, God. Yeah. I wish. I use some of it to pay for college. Yeah. We'll get into that later. Though. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I'd say a lot of us juggle multiple things Mm -hmm. like most of the guy models i know either do fitness stuff part-time meaning like they'll be a trainer or they'll be doing something like that or which is really smart of them which is great or they'll be like bartending like a lot Mm -hmm. also do like kind of like nightlife work like they'll be a bartender you have to have flexible hours yes for sure so they have one Mm -hmm. or the other um or like david works at intel like so you you do a lot of different yeah i have my own like website design business Mm -hmm. um so it's not just you know standing there and looking pretty it's job security and making sure that you're valuable because so like do you have plans where do you kind of want to take modeling overall are you still figuring that out i don't know i'm just here (laughs) <laughs> I feel like I'm just here. Day by day. <laughs> I'm just here because, like, I think for a while I got, when I was younger, I think I got sold the idea of going to New York, and I almost did, but then mm-hmm. when I turned 15 was when you, before the new laws in New York, because they, they changed the talent laws to where you now have to be 18 to go and work solo. Before okay. it was, like, 16. So mm-hmm. for a while when I was 15, we were waiting for me to turn 16, and they were going to push me out, and I had an agency already that was, like, ready to take me. And then those laws came into effect, and so then I got put on hold. Oh. So then I kind of kept just getting put on hold, and then I was like, well, eh. Yeah. Who knows if I'm going to do it. At this point, I think I do it now just, like, because I like it, and it's mm-hmm. kind of fun. And sure, sometimes you can make money with it and whatever, but it's not, like, like my main goal. Like, I, yeah. I know it's not going to be a career path at this point. Mm-hmm. Like, I just have kind of figured that out. Yeah. It's, but it's fine. <laughs> no, it's, for me, it, um, I... I used to be a wedding planner. I love planning stuff. Yeah. And theater, I love like behind the scenes stuff. And I just sort of recently kind of started taking the direction of being interested in runway production Mm -hmm. and kind of going that route with things or more of a behind the scenes industry type deal. It'd be fun to work for like an agency and help other models. I don't know. There's so many different avenues though. I've thought about that too. Working for an agency. Because I think Mm -hmm. that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, I do too. It would be fun, I think. So, yeah. Okay, the next one I have is, like, the super skinny, probably going to dive into eating disorders here. Yeah, um, heads up. So, yeah. I do have some stats. Okay. You can start while I pull them up, though. Um, yeah, so the whole thing about models not eating, um, anorexia, bulimia, It tends to be left out of the conversation and really more so models here go eat a sandwich or go eat like a hamburger or whatever. And there's never like um, 
a whole lot of concern over weight loss. It's more like celebrated. Mm -hmm. Um, There was a movie. It was really, really good. And excuse me, I don't know why I'm (coughs) choking. Was it Gia? No, Gia was about Um, drug issue. So this had, um, I forget the actress's name, but it was called To the Bone. And I believe it was Netflix. It was so good. I haven't seen it yet. I want to watch it, though. Yeah. It looks really good. And it's like how people perpetuated her extremely severe anorexia by mm-hmm. telling her how good she looked all mm-hmm. the time. Yeah, that happens. Yeah. So I have like a couple of stats. I'll explain the background and I'll put a link for this in our description. But okay. So cool. Model Alliance, which we talked about a little, I joined it. So I'm officially part of like the model health and safety survey they do every cool. year. Um, and they just ask general questions about like your field, what you're doing. So a couple of stats. So from, and they have a bunch of people. I don't know how many people are surveyed, but it's all of the major markets in the U.S. at least. So out of all that, um, 68.3% of models suffer from like anxiety or depression. And I'm not surprised by that at all. 64.1% have been asked to lose weight by their agency, which I used to be asked that all Really? The yeah. I mean, I'm not time. surprised, but... And then uh, 31.2% have, have had an eating disorder or I think still... One and then 48.7% have done fasts or cleanses mm-hmm. or restricted food to like do a, like a fast little weight loss, like meal replacement stuff. Yeah, yeah. so that's yeah, I'll we'll just do that with that <sighs> chunk for now. But so that kind of shows like, yeah, so getting into mind. So for a while, un- the unfortunate thing is, I feel like the bone, like I say to people, the bones of modeling are really terrible. Mm-hmm. Like, the standards that it was set up on are, are really bad, but, like, once you get out from that, it's not as terrible. Like, I currently now have never been asked to lose weight. Like, mm-hmm. it's never really, like, a thing. But I believe, and I might be wrong, but I believe the concept of the mo- of a model started when uh, designers were trying to draw models for sketches, and there was, like, this diagram of, like, the 10-circle woman. It's, like, 10 mm-hmm. circles stacked on top of each other, and that's your model size. And how you draw one and like sketching okay and then the first time that women actually they started to standardize sizes for women was i believe during the great depression so they took a lot of women who were like malnutrition mal- malnutrition <laughs> mal- like <laughs> underweight Nourish, yeah and like hungry and starving and we're using them as the size standards to build the size zero size two size four huh. when they started standardizing clothing sizes so when you go off of that, it's like it's not a real size of someone who's yeah. a healthy, normal human being. And most modeling is built off of the standards of someone before they hit puberty. Like What? Well, like... Oh, yeah, like no hips. Like and... you don't have a big hip and you don't have a large bust yeah. and your waist is really small. Because I remember really before I super hit puberty, I hit my sizes no problem. Like industry mm-hmm. standard... Industry standard for at the average model, so I'll say like the skinny model. Your bust is like thirty two to thirty four, and this is inches. And then your mm-hmm. waist, I think, is twenty four to maybe twenty seven. Mm-hmm. And then your hip should be a thirty three to a thirty five at the most, which is tiny, tiny. for hips. Like, like yeah, I used to be able to be that, and now I fully am not. And I don't like, think my hips could do that. I don't think my butt would allow. Yeah, so I was that for a while, but the, I remember the biggest struggle was when I was working out and, like, trying to diet correctly for modeling was, mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm, like, a 36. <clears throat> if I could at least get it to a 35 and a half, then we can kind of lie and be like, yeah. she's a 35. Mm-hmm. And then you could get signed. Because that's, like, honestly, your designer doesn't super care usually. I mean, they do because... The theory behind that is, like, that you're the size of the mannequin, that the, they're building the form Right. On. But after that, it's, like, the agency cares more because they want to be able to present you correctly, so they're, like, you have to keep your size. Yeah. I mean, if you are off by an entire inch and you show up for a fitting... I mean, that's not good. Yeah. that's like, You can get fired. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's misrepresenting yourself because at the end of the day, you are there to be used as a tool Mm -hmm. to sell and show off clothing um so you have to provide a correct you know but a half an inch i mean half an inch is an inch is a bigger problem it is yeah 
But that's like why fit modeling is such a hardcore mm-hmm. form. Like fit modeling is great and you can usually make a lot of money off it, but you have to keep your sizes so <clears throat> correct. Or if you don't, you have to just give your client like a huge heads up because they mm-hmm. want you to essentially they want you to freeze time and stay that size. Yeah. Because they're gonna use you for like like I know Nike does a lot of fit modeling yeah. here and stuff, so they want you to stay like their size six mm-hmm. and you Which stay makes it. sense. Yeah. Because they want to make sure there's continuity and the customers like testing products, which mm-hmm. is kind of what fit models, you know, they put on the clothing and they describe like how it feels, mm-hmm. what they like about it, what they don't like about it. And so if you're gonna use that fit model over and over, you want consistency. So um but Nike, I mean, that isn't just for like skinny models. No. They need, not even just Nike. Like for fit models, they, any anybody that makes garments need like different sized women and mm. proportions and all of that jazz. I always think that the measurements are really more um, to show proportions to designers before they can see you. Obviously, sizing, but um, I don't know because that makes a difference. Um, but eating disorders and all of that um it's really easy to fall into that trap because when you watch your sizes go down if you are being healthy and you're trying to reduce just you know you have you haven't been eating great at all and so you're like you want to make a lifestyle change which happens to benefit your job Mm -hmm. um it's hard like once you lose like an inch and a half you're like but i could just like do another half an inch oh yeah it's or so like, easy to fall into. Yeah, and it's like, you know, you start learning ways to, like, reduce faster. Like, I've been really unhealthy in the past about it. Um, I know, I think some people think it's all about, like, your weight. I'm like, I don't, I've never mm-hmm. really had a client care about your weight. Like, they ask you yeah. on, on, like, on, on a casting sheet, they'll be like, oh, how much do you weigh? But it truly, it's more like what your inches are. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, you're fine. Like, we could care less where your weight is. It's just like, oh muscle yeah height exactly I always wondered why I weighed more than my friends and now that I'm thinking of I so we used to have to do like yeah yeah, in gym class they would do like open like they take your weight and stuff and Mm -hmm. so I would always be like what the heck and I'm like oh I've been five foot ten since I was like Mm -hmm. 14 so um and then you know there's bulimia um which is extremely serious that Mm -hmm. has the repercussions of like your esophagus getting destroyed your teeth um, it just hurts your stomach lining. Yeah, yeah, it's overall horrible. And then all of that leads to depression and mental yes. illness. And eating disorders are a mental illness, but it, you know, snowballs. Um, I also hate the assumption that I think a lot of people have the assumption that every model has an eating disorder. Yeah. Where there are, of course, unfortunately, they're prevalent and no one really talks about them. So that's an issue. Mm-hmm. But there are several models I've met um, who literally do just have a very skinny body in mm-hmm. general. They have a very fast metabolism and they can kind of eat whatever and they're not unhealthy at all. Right. Like they just are naturally very thin people. Mm-hmm. And so I hate when people kind of look at them and they're like, is she okay? Like she's actually, that's actually just her size. Yeah. Like she, and same with, um, I don't know if you remember, like they're not doing the Victoria's Secret show this year apparently, but I remember they'd always ask them to be like, well, what do you eat in a day? And like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, some of those girls probably are naturally very thin yeah. because you can just look at like her leg or her arm mm-hmm. and it's wrist already, size, wrist ankle. Size. She's already very thin mm-hmm. in general. So she probably, I mean, I'm sure she does work out and eat And you should because, because you're you human. <laughs> but it's like, I bet you she already is just a relatively thin person because mm-hmm. some, a, a good chunk of models I know were, they yeah. are just relatively thin people. Yeah. Like, I mean, they don't put on a lot of weight. If they do, it just doesn't hit them in like the stomach. It maybe goes right. to like the leg or like mm-hmm. the hip. So it's like, they don't gain a lot of weight in the places where you would like think they would. And when you're taller too, gaining weight doesn't show it doesn't show at all really yeah unless it's drastic like and i don't know it sucks when you're just constantly trying to fit a mold Mm -hmm. so and then people will say oh well you can break the mold it's like great that's a great (laughs) thought to have the problem is when you're already in the field you don't want to do that because you don't want to be the one that's Mm -hmm. like the only like ruffling feathers or the one that's like try and do something different and you're going to struggle forever until yeah. something changes you have to make like, money like you have to yeah. I see it the same as like yeah ideally in a job where your boss is like being horrible or whatever yeah you should be able to completely stick up for yourself and just 
tell them exactly how you feel and whatnot, but you're not going to because you need your job. Because you need your job. So. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, I don't know. That's a, it's a sticky subject because it's just, it's so sensitive to some people and um, it goes, I don't know, what am I trying to say? It just, uh, help me out here. <laughs> um, I mean, it's just terrible to be assumed that there's something wrong. With yeah. You. Something wrong with you there in you a go. field where you're already um, extremely criticized mm-hmm. already. And it's not always meant to be like rude criticism. Right. It's just general, like they're picking you apart and mm-hmm. it's kind of just what you signed up for. Right. So you're already in a field where it's like, a little hardcore and like I think that's another I don't know if that's on my list but I think that's another thing like you're mentally you have to be very strong willed to mm-hmm. this field because you're Fixed going thing. to get picked apart Li- like literally people will come up to you and be like well Devin has like a really broad shoulder and then she has like a really small bust and like a smaller waist and then a really wide hip so she's an hourglass and then her arms are really thin, so she really doesn't have a lot of arm fat, but I could, like, pinch the arm fat so I could see that she still has arm fat. She kind of has, like, a wider thigh. And, yeah, to anyone who's self-conscious, it's going to sound terrible. Like, uh-huh. I just picked apart half of my body. But to me, I'm like, yeah, that's just, like, kind of what happens. Yeah. Like, where you could be, like, like for a while, like, my hands are really bony. We both have mm-hmm. bony hands. So they kind of can look, like, claw-esque mm-hmm. if you're posing with them weird. So, like... Someone telling me I have, like, a skeleton hand is really rude, but it's also me trying to be, like, aware of, like, making my hand, yeah. like, sit more naturally so it doesn't look like uh, some claw coming out of a photo. Right. But that's, like, yeah, that sounds really terrible to anybody else. Mm-hmm. If I like, walked up to someone else and said that, they'd be like, what the hell? Yeah, like, so... but you're being paid for it. And it's, like, they, when it's coming from the correct place, um, they really ultimately are just describing you. Yes. Um, they're not saying, well, hopefully they're not saying, well, her hips are just too wide. I don't like them. Or I mean, that does happen. It does. But, yeah. um, ideally, where it's coming from is just to describe you um, as accurately as possible because, I mean, that's the point. And you know that you sign up for it. Um, but there is the negative where people... If you don't, you should know. Sorry. Like, yeah. You should be prepared to be... Mm-hmm. A little, a little destroyed, but like not fully. Yeah, but do have boundaries with it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. like wholeheartedly, and that's hard to develop. Is like it's very hard to get boundaries <sighs> when you're first starting. Yeah, I think along with that, um, along the line of like mental illness and stuff, there is some drug use. I personally have only encountered a little, mm-hmm. but because of this survey, I know that there's a lot more. Like because of the results from the model survey um the only stuff I've really encountered I do know girls who are I used to know girls who like smoked a lot and that was also kind of their form yeah. of dieting to keep really skinny mm-hmm. which is very sad but also like you it's know, really common it's common I think it's much more common in New York it seems to me than here mm-hmm. um, it was a little more east coast yeah and um and then I do know that there's some unfortunately there's some cocaine use oh yeah Kate Moss. Yeah, there's a there was a girl I used to work with who ended up going to Italy and she it was something weird like she wasn't getting paid enough for her living wage cuz you're supposed to mm-hmm. get like a living wage and that's there so that you can just at least stay in an apartment and whatever. So she fell into drug use unfortunately because mm. she was just trying to go to the club scenes to be able to make money to have food when she wasn't getting jobs yeah so it's like stuff like that easily spirals also when you're around not great people Mm -hmm. and throw out a couple of stats so uh 76.5 percent of models have been exposed to drugs or alcohol on the job and then 50.6 percent have been exposed to cocaine wow and then 24.7 percent think that they have had or have like a drug slash alcohol so that's a lot (laughs) it's locally I haven't really yeah I can't think of a time here I don't really know that many people here I've just heard some horror stories from people that I've worked with before of maybe their experiences or like people they knew who had experiences so it's a thing that happens but like it's not as common as I feel like 
potentially it gets portrayed in the media. Yeah, yeah just, like, movies. Party and, all the time and right. stuff. Which, if you're trying to maintain, like, your weight and yeah. your size, like, guess what? You can't. No. Um, the other thing is, like, abusing over-the-counter type medication. So, like, laxatives. Mm-hmm. Like, I've known um, girls that use them, like, the week leading up to something. And it's like, I looked it up. It was just, like, curious. And it's like, just eventually, like, your stomach lining starts to shed out. And it's just like... Oh, I don't know. I knew in my agent, one of my old agency used to be like a huge proponent of this. They would, it wasn't laxatives, but they used to do, say, a thing where you did like, um, like the fit teas or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like you do the fit teas or you do like a, a juice cleanse a couple of days leading up to before you had a thing. Uh-huh. They really were huge into that. And yeah. I remember being like, I remember trying it, mm-hmm. and I remember being like, no, I think I maybe lasted a day, because yeah. I was like, I need food, like, yeah. I can't just, like, I remember doing slight meal replacement with it, though, which is still healthy, I would do, like, instead, I'd do, like, maybe a smoothie in the morning instead mm-hmm. of, like, a full big breakfast, but then I would still eat throughout the rest of the day, right. so I wasn't, like, cutting everything out, but I remember them telling me that, and me thinking, being like, how does anyone do that, yeah. like, that's just so, like... You're just starving yourself. Yeah. Food. Like. I mean, I know that there are, like, some diet studies and stuff that, um, because, I mean, there's, like, religions that fast for a day and things like that. Like, yeah. one day isn't necessarily going to ruin everything, but um, it's also just, like, you need to, if you're maintaining being healthy, mm-hmm. then you're always kind of ready to go. Um, mm-hmm. Although... I mean, I found myself in the positions, like, a week before a runway, I'm, like, I feel, like, pretty bloated and yeah. not great. But you just, like, eat lighter stuff. Like, you work it out. Yeah, you figure it out. But you yeah. don't do it by, like, drinking tea only. No. It does. And then by after the runway, when you start eating again, you're going to, it's just going to, like. You're going to eat so much. Yeah. I always eat a crap ton after a runway. I know. Me too. Well, usually because, like, we talked about, they only give you so much food backstage. And also... Um, I don't know if you're the same, but I don't necessarily want to eat a huge amount before because mm-hmm. I don't want to blow. Oh, yeah. Just because I don't want to feel super bloated if I'm mm-hmm. about to go walk or if I'm in something that's maybe kind of tight. I don't want to like have to like hold in my stomach more. Yeah. Just because I don't want it to be like, oh, she has like a food baby because <laughs> she's bloated. <laughs> and it helps your confidence too. Yeah, you know, so, like you feel good. So I don't necessarily eat like a lot before the runway. I do eat, but it's not like a huge amount. Or if I do, mm-hmm. I try to do it like right when we get there at call time so yeah. there's more time to kind of like Digest. break down and stuff so it's not just like sitting there um but yeah yeah so it, well and it's also a crazy long day full of adrenaline mm-hmm. and you're really busy and so it's kind of one of those things where We're you trying. don't even realize you're super hungry until you no. sit down and you're like oh my god like once you're done yeah or coconut water i need people used to just drink coconut water all day the day of a show because there used to be shows that were sponsored by it, so they oh. they'd like give it to us for free, uh-huh. and so people would just be like coconut water all day because it just makes it like cleans your system out. Oh. So they would just like <laughs> constantly drink coconut water. Uh. Um, okay, what? really quickly, one subject that ties in well with okay. the eating is um, that modeling is easy money. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because that right there, just the risk that you're at for eating disorders and um, you know, just the or mental health in general. In yeah. yeah. And I want to say the pressure to maintain like your size and stuff, it exists, but it's also part of the job. So there's mm-hmm. like a balance there. But I mean, yeah. It's not easy money. No. And that's not the only reason why. Speaking just locally here, Portland is mainly an athletic market. Mm-hmm. Mainly an athletic, and then I would say right after athletic is like commercial lifestyle y. Yeah. Which those pay great mm-hmm. usually. The problem is you're in fashion if you're in fashion here there's like a plus side because it's super creative yeah the problem is a lot of the times you're working with artists that don't necessarily have a lot of money so they can't really pay you so you're doing a lot either for free or for trade or if you do get paid it's kind of under the table and it's really small so like usually the projects that take the most time and are really cool you're not necessarily getting paid for but mm-hmm. you're like doing it yeah so i mean like i there's I can count on like I think one hand the number of like fashiony shoots I've actually been paid for. Yeah. Like it's not that much. That's why 
mostly like you try to work either in acting here or um, athletic athletic or lifestyle like because you don't necessarily get paid a huge amount like Mm -hmm. I I would say this is true um, for most of the the male models I've worked with here a lot of them pretty much only do fitness Mm -hmm. and they like dip into fashion occasionally but it's because they are usually like once Nike or Adidas or Columbia or Under Armour likes you they will like keep you Mm -hmm. and keep reusing you like again with David Adui when Nike Golf was still a thing someone someone on set said that he kind of looked like Tiger Woods which like kind of but not really but then they just kept using him because they're like you're great you fit the like golfer body type yeah you're doing really well so he just kept getting rehired for the those shoots and that's a dream to have a client who's mm-hmm. gonna keep picking you and especially one that's gonna pay well is gonna get take care of you yeah. while on set so that's almost your goal is to get that oh like, yeah ultimately like you want to be rehired that's yes. the way to like so when you are first walking into a job and you've never met anybody you want to make sure that you make a good impression and that's why but it's interesting because male models are paid less than women models. Really? Mm-hmm. Really? Um, m- most of the time, from what I was researching, I'd be mm-hmm. interested to see because the industry is opening up to transgender models and um, different models that um, identify in various ways. And I'm always interested in um, pay gaps and like or wage gaps and mm-hmm. stuff. And I'm interested to see like how the industry evolves that way while the rest of society is trying to get women equal pay. Yeah. If the fashion industry will take that opportunity to also get male models equal pay and diverse models equal pay. I think from what I've experienced is more diverse models. Usually when I'm at a show, everyone's getting paid the same, you know. Runway, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have no idea about shooting because, mm-hmm. again, I've only done a couple of shoots where they're actually like, I think the, yeah, I think, like, the the research I was reading was um, more or less geared towards, like, paid um, print modeling, like, advertising. Mm. Um, but, so, yeah, it's not easy, and the pay is not always great, and you have to go on a lot of castings, that, and a lot of just things that sometimes you never hear back, and it takes a lot of networking, too, like, it's not just show up and shoot, it's time outside of that. Yeah, with the whole, like, partying subject, every fashion I've party I've ever gone to, it's only for networking. Mm-hmm. And, like, they're usually, yeah, they're cool, but they're never, like, um, I remember there was that, there's, like, an episode of How I Met Your Mother where they went to, like, a Victoria's Secret party mm-hmm. afterward, and everyone was just, like, drunk and partying and crazy, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I've never been to one like that. I'm sure potentially in New York... There's mm-hmm. some like that, because that's, like, the huge market, you know, or maybe in L.A. But honestly, most of them, it's people networking. Yeah. You're networking. You don't want to be the drunk person. You don't want to be a drunk person. Like, you're trying to meet people, mm-hmm. or you're trying to keep the relationships that you have consistent. So mm-hmm. that's where you see them, because you yeah. don't see them anywhere else, like, outside of that realm. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's, you know, there's a lot of different pieces to it. And just because the hours of it don't take place between nine and five, um, they're really, they're like more like retail hours. They are. You're like, like, what's this week hold? And then sometimes you get castings like the night before. And yeah, so it's not easy in case you think that it is. Mm -hmm. And if we didn't convince you, I feel like we could do a whole episode on that. But um, let's take a break before diving in. And um, yes. We'll be right back. Hey, guys. We are back. Um, so we already recorded the second part of this episode, but it went on for a really long time. We didn't want our episode to be, like, super long to where maybe you guys kind of weren't interested as much. So we're turning this into a two-parter. This mm-hmm. first part will be out on Tuesday. August 6th. The 6th. And the second part will be out on the normal days we are going to publish, which is the 8th, which is a Thursday. Yes. And um, in the next uh, episode, just to let everybody know, we cover the over-sexualization of models, and then we go off on a sufficient runway tangent. Yes. <laughs> um So that's the second half of this episode. And um, yeah, thank you guys for listening. Yeah. Oh, let's plug our stuff because we're recap or ending this episode. 
Yeah, so um, we are active on Instagram. Follow us on Model Talk Podcast PDX. We are on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Breaker, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, and Stitcher. So please subscribe. We're everywhere, to us guys. All <laughs> on those, if you are those, we're still waiting to get approval from like Castbox and yeah. Spotify. Once we get those, we'll let you know on our Instagram. That's kind of where we announce things. Mm-hmm. So make sure to follow us there. Subscribe, review, share our stuff, please. Yep. Um, and next episode, we talk about all the upcoming stuff. So make yep. sure to listen to that one. And thanks for listening, guys. Cool. See you soon. Bye.